So here we are, we are in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin for an amazing uh, three day marriage retreat. Yes. We've been to a lot of marriage retreats. This is very unique and special and we're excited to be a part of it. And we're talking this Saturday uh, to over 120 couples and it's gonna be great. And so while we were having lunch, we were just talking through some of the couples that we're working with and some of the challenges that they're experiencing and wanted to bring you into the conversation. And the reality is when you can experience an affair, Typically, uh, most divorces don't occur because of infidelity, but rather it's how you show up or refuse to show up after the discovery of the affair that determines whether the couple stays together or not. And we were talking about the three, in essence, post-affair marital patterns that couples kind of get either stuck in or choose to jump into that could be transformational. We want to talk about those um, because a lot of people are hurting. They want to know how do we move forward? How do we get past the pain? But they just don't know what the process is. Yeah, and you find that a lot of times if you go to church, um, you'll hear the pastor say, you know, God's going to do it. He's got you. He's going to get you out of it. Um, all you got to do is pray. All you got to do is seek God. Sorry, my hands are shaking and I'm making all kinds of noise. Um, all you have to do is seek God. All you have to do is, is pray. All you have to do is pray together. And that's the reality is, is that not, first of all, not everybody even honors God. That's, that's number one. Not everybody honors God, but everybody has experienced some kind of mar marital turmoil. But at the end of the day, God has done everything. He has literally created a system for you to obey. And so now it's not necessarily about what God's going to do. It's really about what are you going to do with what God gave you already. Yes, that's so very true. And I think a lot of people miss it. And we take this approach that we sit back and wait for God to do everything. And God is like, I've empowered you. I've given you what you need. Now work what I've given you. Yeah. And so it kind of relates to these three patterns that we're going to talk about. And so the first pattern is what we call the sufferers. This is the couple who's been through infidelity. They've been through some sort of betrayal and they just can't make it out. They remain stuck in the pain. They continue to suffer. Now, for whatever reason, the mystery of why they continue to stay together in all this pain, who knows, is just as mysterious as to why they can't overcome the challenges that they're going through. But this is the couple there. It's kind of like a back and forth, tit for tat, adversarial, mm -hmm low intensity warfare engagement that they have with one another and whether the affair happened six months ago or six years ago every single argument every single issue somehow is attached to the affair mm -hmm. so if we have an appointment at six o'clock and i show up at 605 somehow it's attached to the affair if i spilled milk on the table somehow it's attached to the affair and how horrible of a person i am and in, in this particular scenario you have two people who play two very distinct roles. One chooses to play the role of the victim and one has to play the role of the perpetrator. And that is the lens by which they see each other. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to get past what they're going through because they're drenched in the emotions. Now, nine times out of 10, if you're a sufferer, it's because you haven't embraced forgiveness. And so when you refuse to forgive, you have this vengeful, uh, disposition where you're going to project the hurt on your partner that they caused you right. with the betrayal. Well, I think it, and it, I think it goes a layer deeper with that as well because you know it, it, a personality that has been steeped in the misery of an affair and has not really been given the proper tools to get out of it they can begin to identify with their hurt and their pain. And so forgiveness means that you now have to let go of the hurt and the pain that you've identified with. So you did me wrong. You broke my heart. You destroyed our family. You destroyed our money. You've destroyed everything. Mm. And now I, that's what I identify with. I'm identifying with all this pain. And in order for me to forgive, I've got to cross this bridge and leave all that pain and all that blame and the identity associated with all that pain and that blame right over there. And a lot of people have a hard time with that because who would they be without all that pain? Who would they be now if I actually had to forgive this person and we actually had to start mending that fence that was burnt or, or yeah. tore apart? Yeah, so you're right. There are certain personality types that struggle with that. And so becoming self-aware and knowing your challenges is helpful in the process. Mm -hmm. But typically this is the couple who cannot move forward. So they're stuck in that space. And we know many couples who literally, you have to understand when you're in a stressful relationship and it's not healthy, not only is it not healthy in terms of what the relationship looks like, but it begins to impact your own body, your own health. Yeah. These are individuals who don't take the time to really self-care. 
they're not praying, they're not resting, they're not meditating, they're not exercising, they're not eating effectively. And so what's happening in the relationship literally begins to cause them to transform into something that, and, and think about it, that's not good. And if you're not in a place that's good, and if you're not healthy, then how can you show up for everyone else the way you need to show up? Yeah. Like if, if I'm not a healthy Hassani, then I can't be a healthy husband. I can't be a healthy uh, father. I can't be a healthy business owner. I can't be a healthy minister because I'm not healthy. So everything I do is attached to who I am. And so the healing that you need to go through is incredibly necessary for yourself as well as for the relationship. Absolutely. So these these are these are the suburbs. Then yeah. number two, mm -hmm. you have what we call the builders, right? So the builders would be that couple. They know that an affair has occurred. Uh, they're committed to being committed. They're not going anywhere. They've made a decision. We will stay married. Mm -hmm. They'll read a book. They'll go to a seminar. They may do an intensive, but that's all they do. They don't do the work. So in essence, they think reading a book is the work. Mm -hmm. No, implementing what the book says, implementing what the counseling session says, implementing what you get in the intensive says, that is the work. And so therefore they remain stuck. So they become like two ships passing in the middle of the night. There's no connection. There's no anything. Yeah. This is a couple who they go half on bills, half on kids, half on life, but there's no intimacy. Yeah, and it's almost like a false forgiveness because you're 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 really just moving forward. You're not dealing with the issues. You're not actually really unpacking all the stuff that happened, but you still got bills, you still have kids, you still have mm -hmm. responsibilities, you have a house to take care of. You're just you're connected by situations and circumstances, but there's nothing between the marriage. Nothing. And so um, it's sad because it's like you, the, you at, from one point of view, this is a couple that is actually willing to stay together. Like they, they did not divorce, they did not call it quits. On the outside, mm -hmm. externally, things still look good. When you see them in the street, they're still together, they're still smiling, they're still doing the things, but there's nothing going nothing. on here. Nothing. It's almost like they're public successes, but private failures. Like they'll put an image up into the entire world that everything's all good. On Facebook, you think they have the best relationship on, on the earth, but inside their home, behind closed doors, nothing and so that's where i think a lot of couples are and that's what we talk about when you go from being soulmates to roommates to roommates just emotionally disconnected and it's important that you do what's necessary to reconnect yourself so no more infidelity no more major conflict where you're fighting and fussing with each other yeah um at least yeah, at that at that moment yeah at that moment right but you're just in a season of stuckness right and if they're not working on it then then the threat of the repeat of the offense is is possible that is because that's so the problem true. that is the problem yes. the, the fact is that you did not work on it and you're not moving forward together and so you're either stagnant or you're moving backwards mm. because there's been no training you can forgive or give the false forgiveness but that person is still doing the same thing so it, let's say it's a husband and wife and it was the wife that cheated and he just decided, I forgive her. I'm going to forgive her. Divorce is not in my vocabulary. There's no divorce anywhere in my family. And I'm going to stick it out because I love her. But they've never worked it out. They've never done anything. And so she's still sitting with her same issues that caused her to step out in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of time. And that's true. You know, you can forgive quickly is what we call cheap forgiveness. It's just like, all right, fine, I forgive you, let's move forward. But there's no system accountability, there's no system of accountability. There's no process by which you go through your personal healing. There's nobody that you're going to to help, help purge the issues that brought you into the situation in the first place. And guess what? You're right. Nothing's mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. but the possibility of something happening is always there. So you got to be willing to put in the work. Number three, the third post-affair marital pattern is what we call the explorers. Mm -hmm. The explorers are the couple who say, you know what? What happened to us? Now hear the language. They use we, us, our language. Not he, she, him, her, you, me. Not what you did to me five years ago. Not what I did to you five years ago. But what we as a couple went through. So in essence, we're both taking ownership for what we endured. And we've made a decision that what we have, the relationship as we know it, is dead. And guess what? We want it to be dead because the relationship was bad for so long that it led to the affair in the first place. So why would we want to sign up for more of that? So this is a couple who says the relationship is dead. Why don't we recreate a brand new relationship? Let's explore 
a new reality for us. Mm. So there's a colleague that I have, and this colleague um, was interviewed. She does the same thing that we do in terms of helping couples. She was in an, interv in an interview. She was asked by the uh, radio host, so tell me about your marriage. Like you save other people's marriages, tell me about yours. Well, she said, well, I, I'm actually on my third marriage. And he says, oh, <laughs> your third marriage, huh? And she says, yeah, I'm on my third marriage to my first husband. See, after about 15 years of being married, we realized that it was good, but we wanted something different. So we decided to sit down with pieces of paper and pens, and we wanted to write out who we wanted to be in this new season of our life. Not the relationship we wanted to have, but who individually we wanted to be as people because we wanted to be a better version of ourselves. So I, write it, I wrote down what I wanted to be, she wrote down who she wanted to be, and then based upon that agreement, we then renewed our vows. So in essence, they renewed their vows to brand new people, having a brand new chemistry, a different vibe, a different flow, a different relationship because they became different people. And they did that for about a decade. And then at, at the end of 10 years, they said, you know what, this works so well, why don't we do it again? So they wrote down who they wanted to be in the next season of their life, renewed their vows again, and now they're on their third marriage to their first spouse. How many of us renew our vows, but we're signing up for the same old person, the same old issues, the same old problems, and nothing ever changes? You know what? That to me, that's going to resonate with so many people. Um, and I'm sitting here thinking, why have we not done that? Can we do that? We absolutely because, can do that. Because the, here's the, the, the reality of it is that a lot of times people step out of their marriage because they're bored with what's in the marriage or it's just been, they've been together for years, everything is predictable. And what do you try to do? You try to mix it up with date nights, you try to bring the incitement, excitement in other ways. But what about coming together and say, hey, let's become together what we want to be together like that to me is amazing Isn't it? And, and it speaks so much to at the end of the day what we all need to do because the turnaround in our marriage took place when we decided to step inside of our own circle and look up and look at god because what we knew mm -hmm. is that or what we discovered because we didn't know is that he wasn't the problem and i wasn't the problem as asani always says when you point the finger at somebody four fingers are pointing back at you well all, we all came came into this situation with our own problems and he couldn't change me and I couldn't change him. It was only when I decided to submit my issues to God, vertical, and he decided to submit his issues to God, vertical, that transformation came and That's right. we became That's right. different people yes. and these two different people came together to do what we do now. Like, it's just crazy yeah. when you think of it. So I love the idea of before trouble comes, mm. before there's a breakdown in your marriage, before you need to literally draw a circle and beg God to transform you so that you can stay in a marriage with your spouse, you say, come on, let's get together and figure out what are we gonna do with this next de yeah. decade? Who do we wanna be? Because I know so many couples that they have these aspirations and those aspirations make them go this way. Like they're not in agreement. Like, you know, somebody wants to go back to school and, be, and get a new degree and the spouse has no interest in them doing that. The money, they're not, you know, they're not on the same page. There's just so many uh, couples that their aspirations divide yeah, them. Yeah. And this is a beautiful way for your aspirations to to link you together. And, and, and I love that idea. And that's something that we actually are going to do. And we're going to lead the way in this because I see how it impacted their marriage and how it can impact ours and so many others. But what keeps us from embracing change a lot of times are our own fears, our own idiosyncrasies, our own biases, our own struggles that may stem back from previous relationships or from childhood. And so we step into marriage already frightened, already on guard, already not willing to, to do things different. But when you get comfortable with being uncomfortable, transformation could come and you could explore a new reality that you've never had. And so I think that that's something that all couples should sit down and really talk through. Who do I want to be? Yeah. Like, People stop developing when they leave their home at 18. Think about it. I hear so many people say, well, this is this is the way my mama raised me, and, 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 and this is what my dad instilled in me. Well, when did you stop living with your parents? Uh, 18. So how old are you now? Uh, 58. So for the last 40 years, you haven't grown, you haven't developed, you haven't changed, so you're still holding on to who you were when you were in your parents' home. That's so, a good point. So transformation yeah. has to be a reality. The one thing we know about change 
It's inevitable. Everything changes. I'd rather be on the side of intentionality with change than change by default, right? We all age, we all get older, we all go through changes in life that we really have nothing to do with. But what if you're intentional in your change? Now you can have a life that you've never had. Most of us, we know that the brain, we only access 10% of it. 90% we don't even tap into. How much of your marriage, how much of your life have you not tapped into because you weren't intentional in going deeper? Oh, wow. That's deep. So I think that this is something that all of us should embrace. So now the question is, do you want to be a sufferer? Do you want to be a builder? Or do you want to be an explorer? Hmm. I say we choose to be explorers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I encourage you to sit down with your partner, watch this video again and again and again, take yeah. notes and kind of assess where you are, what pattern you currently exist in, and where you ultimately want yeah, to be. Yeah, actually, we'd love for you to make comments below. We would love to know where you're at. It, you know, like, no shame in the game, right? We've been there. So mm -hmm. go ahead and post where, you've, where you're where you at and where you want to go. Yeah. And let us know, does that, does that resonate with you? Actually sitting down with your spouse and saying, hey, who do we want to be? That's What's right. our next chapter going to look like yeah. together? And, and if you're struggling and you're a sufferer or even a builder, and you're like, well, we want this, but we just don't know what to do about it. We encourage you to go to couplesacademy.org. There's so many programs that we offer that really are transformational for couples. The number one requested thing that we do all over the country, all over the world, but we bring so many couples to our retreat center here in Atlanta is our three-day private marriage intensive because that's when people experience breakthrough. I just heard somebody say, well, you know, maybe we need to work on ourselves for a couple of years and then start working on the relationship. And I said, well, I respectfully want to challenge that. You don't have to take years to go through a personal transformation. Like the three day intensive is so impactful that literally it is equivalent to eight months of counseling that you would literally have to go through eight months of weekly sessions to get what you get in the weekend experience. And that's why people love it. So listen, Reach out to us, set up a free discovery call. Let's talk further about it and let's help you take your marriage to the next level.